The powerful warlock Zargor must be slain. Two heroes have accepted the challenge, but will their luck, stamina and skill fail them? <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Friday Fantasy Show from the Bottled Imp, exploring the realms of fantasy. My name is Ken Boyter and today we're going to take a look at, or should I say listen to, the Warlock of Firetop Mountain, The Hero's Quest, full cast audio drama. Yes, I know, who'd have thought it? Now this is written by, I've got it written down here actually, David N. Smith and also directed by Richard Fox. This though is based on, some of you will probably know, the fighting fantasy books. And these came out about 35 years ago. They were written by Ian Livingstone and Steve Jackson, and they are game books. They are ones where you are the hero. You get to decide how the story unfolds. You make the decisions. And you roll dice for combat. You start fighting monsters. So how in the heck are they gonna do an audio play about it? Because you can't choose the story. Let's find out how it works. <laughs> the Warlock of Fire Top Mountain audio play. What the hell is that all about? Well, I shall tell you. That's what I'm here for. It is, as I say, they're based on the books and the Fighting Fantasy books. They were a series of books that I think they did about 40 of them in the end. They've just been re-released by Scholastic Publishers. And so it ties in nicely with, with, with that new release of the books. And they are ones, as I say, that you choose your own adventure. So you might, for example, say, you might say there is a treasure chest, if you can say that, in the corner. Do you want to go over to the chest and open it? Or do you want to go through the left door or the right door? And then you would turn to a certain page, depending on what action you wanted to do. And then you would then read the next bit and the treasure chest might have been trapped and you might get you know, um, spikes coming out and hitting you in the face and then you die. It was that brutal. And then you'd have to start again. So these were game books. These were ones that you choose the adventure. So I was very, very curious to see, well, how can you then take that and then make it into an audio play? Because obviously there isn't any way that you as the listener can actually choose the adventure. Well, I'll tell you a little bit about the story. Zagor is a very powerful and evil warlock and he has taken over the mines underneath Warlock, uh, Firetop Mountain I should say. Uh, he has taken them over and there's a, an elven adventurer named Vale uh, Moonwing, that's her full name, and she has been sent to slay the warlock. It's as simple as that. But along the way, she starts off on her adventure, along the way she does bump into a human called Cassius Stormblade. And he is, he, they, they kind of become reluctant, I wouldn't say friends, but companions, because he has a friend, that a dwarven friend that has been ensnared, has been turned into a slave by the Warlock of Firetop Mountain because he is using slave labour to mine the mines and so Cassius wants to go and rescue his friend. He has a map, a, a, a very rare map of the actual layout of how to get into the mountain and then the layout of the mountain. So he is a very, he's got a very valuable bit of information there that Vale actually needs. So reluctantly, she agrees to go along, you know, to, to pair up, to team up, and to go and take on Zargor. So that is the actual setup, that's the premise, that's what we're going for. Now that does differ to the books, because in the books it, it doesn't actually have that, in the, in the book I should say, it doesn't actually have both of those characters. So how do they adapt the book into an audio play? Well, what they've done is they've kind of just said, well, we're, we're ignoring the choose your, you know, which page to turn to part of it, obviously. And we're just gonna take the story, we're gonna create the world that the Warlock of Firetop Mountain is set in, and then we're gonna use the characters, but we are gonna follow the story as much as possible. So there is a sort of correct answer, if you like, when you go and play these game books where you know, if you've got a mission, go and slay the Warlock, then that is the one 
correct way. So there will be a way of doing that, but there are many false endings. So, you know, as I say, you might get trapped in a pit and then you die and you have to start again. So here though, they've kind of stripped all that side of it away because you can't then just have both characters die and then that's the end of the radio play because it wouldn't be very long, would it? So they've kind of just done it as a normal audio play, which I guess sounds obvious. But then the question begs, do you lose a bit of essence of what the game books actually are? So they've done it in a way where they've actually got two characters. So the character of Vale, the elf, she's a very experienced and capable and feisty adventurer. So she is the one that kind of knows the answers, is very determined about what she wants to do. Then on the other hand you've got Cassius who is a human and he's, he says he's an adventurer but he's not really that experienced by the looks of it and he, he, he represents us, he represents the listener. He is the one that asks the questions, he is the one that gets information, he is the one that the world, that the adventure is unfolding to and i.e. we're on, you know, it's unfolding for us as well. So he is basically us. So he is the one that's going to be making the mistakes. So for example, he might be the one to fall down a pit, for example, um, that we would do. And then in this, he would be rescued or maybe not. But, you know, he, they carry on the story. Whereas in the game book, you would then have to start again or you just go back and choose a different route if you were going to cheat. So that's, that's how they've done it. They've actually had to have two characters. So obviously in the game book, there's no main character. You are the main character, so it's a solo adventure. So they've had to put in two characters because in a radio play, in an audio play, you have to have at least two characters in order for things to be explained. And, and the story to move along. I think it'd be very difficult to do an audio play with one person, unless it becomes a monologue. I guess you could do it. But, you know, to have two characters, you need that. You need the foil, I should say. So Vale, um, as I say, she isn't in the book, but she's there. She needs to be there because she's the one that drives the story. So she is the one that's very clear about what she wants to do. Cassius, on the other hand, he, he knows what he wants to do, but he's not quite so, well, he, he is assured of himself, but he does make some blunders along the way. So he does ask the basic questions. So, as I say, the setup is, it's set in the world, it's set in the universe. Now, I don't want to give too much away. Now, they did say, the makers of this did say that, they, that you can still play the book if you've listened to the audio play without it spoiling anything. Now, I would sort of agree with that, but, but I mean, I haven't played the Warlock book for ages, and I do want to go back and, and play it again. But there, you might get the odd clue here and there because things that Cass, I think especially with Cassius, there's things that happen to him that you think, oh, okay, maybe I should look out for that particular thing. I don't, I don't want to give any spoilers away. And therefore, I won't choose what Cassius did. So I've got a feeling that, that, that you might get a few hints and tips. So it's probably a good idea if you did want to get involved with the Warlock of Firetop Mountain, maybe to play the game a couple of times just to get you know, used to what's going on and so there isn't too many spoilers. Because I don't think there are spoilers in there. But you might pick up clues. There, are, there seems to be a few clues. Because obviously if you're going to call it the Warlock of Firetop Mountain, it has to resemble the, the original game book. It can't be a completely new story because people would say, well, that's nothing to do with the book. It's just the same title and it's set in the same universe. What they could have done is come up with their own story, but yes, yeah, set it in the, in the land that the Warlock of Firetop Mountain is set in. They could have done that, but they haven't. They've chosen to go with the actual title. So, of course, they do have to have the elements of the game book in there. So then you go... Yeah, so what is the point of turning it into a play? Because it's, it, it isn't, you know, the original format was a game book and it's meant to be a game where you play solo. Now, for me, I would say that it's pure, for pure entertainment. You know, that, that's, it really is as simple as that. The makers are fans of the books. They uh, grew up with the books, they played them, they are fans. And I think a few of the actors in there as well, they used to play them as well. So they, they know about them. They're fans of, of, the, of the book series. So obviously, if you're fans, you kind of want to immerse yourself as much as you can. And one of those ways is obviously by, you know, either making a film adaptation or you do a comic book series, you do an animation maybe, or you do a, an audio play. 
And I think that's, you know, that's a, a really good, it's a different format. So if it, so, and if you've never played the game book, then this would just be, oh, what's this? Warlock of Firetop Mountain. And then you would obviously be judging it alone and separate for it. And, and so then, then the big question is, does it draw you in? Is it good enough? Is it a good enough audio play, an audio drama, to actually stand alone if you had never played any of the fighting fantasy series and you didn't really know what it was? And that is a very, I think that's a very important question. It, they have managed to put quite a bit of substance into this audio play as well. There are a few themes that run through it. It primarily relies on action and things, you know, which is the nature of the books as well, though. You know, you're in a dark corridor. Do you want to go left? Do you want to go right? You're in a room. Do you, what do you want to do? And it's constantly moving. So there is a lot of action in there. And sometimes if something's got a lot of action, you can miss out on the characterization and on the themes. And do you really then care about the characters if they're not well-rounded and they're not really appear real? So they, I'm happy to report that there are good enough themes in this to kind of give it a bit of substance so you do start caring about what's going on. Revenge is a, a big theme in this because there's the warlock that claims the mines and obviously you know that's that's a, that's a no-no, that's a bad thing to do so there's revenge so Vale the elf is sent in to slay the warlock. Just why she's sent in, I couldn't work out, I don't think it's revealed why she actually wants to go or who she, who's sending her in. Because, you know, surely it would be dwarfs that would go and rescue their dwarven brothers and sisters. Surely that's, they're the ones that should go for the revenge. But you kind of take it on board. She's very confident. She, you know, there's no messing with her. She has a clear objective. She wants to go and slay the warlock. And who are we to stop her? So that's a revenge mission there. There's also revenge from Cassius as well because he wants revenge because he his friend has been um, you know captured and enslaved so there's another so they they're united by that theme that's what gives them common ground. I won't spoil it there are a few twists along the way as well to do with that plot line so I'm not going to spoil it for you but just you know it's, it's a nice uh, clever twist that ties back into the book as well. There is a the theme of slavery, as I mentioned before. Um, it just kind of touches on it, and it, it happens more towards the end. As again, I don't want to give too many spoilers away. It does touch on it. So um, the dwarves are a slave there, and and they and and then it begs the question because if it's magic, because he's, he's enslaved with magic, they kind of are brainwashed, and they they kind of feel like they're, that they're not slaves. And I think that's the scariest form of slaves is that if you're entrapped, but you don't know you're entrapped. If you think, yes, I'm happy with my life, I get my meals provided for me, and you know, I'm mining the mines like I've never mined them before, wow, that's scary because you're not going to get rebel. You're not free. You think you're kind of free. You think this is what you want and this is what you're doing, but you're actually not. So for me, that type of slavery is quite powerful. It's magic slavery as opposed to, you know, you're obviously a slave, you're chained up and you're kept in cramped conditions. No, this is something slightly different. So I quite enjoyed that aspect of it, a new slant on slavery there. There is the companionship and although it's reluctant, it's still there. They have a common quest and both of the main characters, Vale and Cassius, are actually decent enough people to want to help the other person out and again I don't really want to give too many plot spoilers away but this theme gets explored and companionship gets explored there's a few twists in that theme as well so those are kind of like the main themes there and I think for a 60 minute it runs for 60 minutes as audio play that's quite enough theme it's very difficult you know to because because you want to pack everything in um, but if there wasn't any themes in there, there wasn't an actual substance to it, then it would be a bit vacuous and it would just be an action kind of story that you wouldn't really care about the characters. As I say, the story is one that keeps moving along. It is exciting for that. It zips along at a good pace, so you kind of don't ever really get bored. You, you know, and and because it, it's an audio, your imagination gets sparked. That's that's another key thing I think for audio plays. Have they done a good enough job in creating the the, the images that your brain is going to be wanting to to dish up to you? Basically, uh, the characters are well rounded. They are, um, you, you might think, well, they're a bit stereotyped. You've got a, you know, you've got a human that's a bit, un, you know, he's, he's a bit useless. And then you've got the elf that's, you know, very strong in, in what she does. But they are, they're deep enough. You get just enough, just enough of their backstories to kind of want to care and want, want them to succeed. Um, you know, the human is a little bit grumpy, is a bit surly. 
and, and that's kind of enjoyable. It's kind of nice that he's kind of like, you know, he's not all happy, happy, because you, you, somebody that's too happy and too good is a little bit unrealistic, I think. You know, everybody has their off days, everybody has a bit of a grumble. There's flaws in these characters, and I think that's very important, because you don't want a, a hero that you think, they're just so good, they're so brilliant at what they do, they're going to win. There's no jeopardy in that. You want your characters, you want that, you want that fear factor that your characters could fail. And in fact, again, I don't want to give any spoilers away, but it's not necessarily the happy, happy ending that you really think is going to happen. Production values are very good. They're very high quality, which is always nice to hear and see. I was going to say, but obviously we're hearing this. It's an audio play. So they, so that, you know, nothing gets out of place. Nothing, you know, the music is of very good quality and it really does set the scene. It's very dramatic in places, but then it could be very subtle. So they've done a brilliant job on that. The writing is good. And it's I, I did start to think that, that that when you write something as an audio play, you've got to keep it moving. You've got to keep it interesting. You you do have to be maybe a slightly more descriptive in what the characters are saying because you need to be setting the scene. It's not necessarily totally obvious where they are if you don't kind of you know give some information verbally as opposed to you know if it's a film then visually you don't need to say hello I'm in a tavern because it's pretty obvious so there is that aspect to the writing as well the special effects are good there's um, again I don't want to give too much away but there are creatures that make noises there's you know bells that ring there's you know magic being cast um, there's fights that happen so all of the sound effects are really good they, they really do lay you know layer it in and it really adds to the atmosphere. You really do feel like you're immersed in a fancy world. Um, and then, you know, there's a good lot of creative ideas in the, in the approach that they've used to create this world. Because, you know, if you're going to create a game book, it's like, well, how do we go about that? So one of the strengths that they've done is that they've used all of these layers to create that world in your imagination. And you, feel, you do feel immersed. You do feel like you're along with the journey, which is exactly what you, you, you want. So overall, I really did enjoy this. It's a very enjoyable and entertaining uh, audio play. And it's nice, if you're fans of the fighting fantasy books like I am, you do want to kind of be, you want more. You kind of, you know, there's a, a, a digital game that's, that's come out called Fighting Fantasy Legends that we've done a review of as well. And again, that takes a slightly different stance to it. But you kind of, it's a different format. It's a different way to experience and, and kind of love the, the, these world, you know, the world that, that they've set up. So again, yes, I would say it is worth doing an audio play because it gives another way in. And therefore, if you've never played any of the books, you might think, ah, oh, you know what, that'd be really fun. I'm going to see if I can defeat Zagor and, and you know, and because and, and, he's got some treasure as well and claim the treasure. You know, it's all of that going on. So I really think they did a really good job with this. My only reservations were that sometimes I felt maybe the explanation of where they were was a little bit too much, J just very slightly. So if it be, yes, I'm in a tavern. Are we in a tavern? Yes, of course we're in a tavern. But I can totally understand why they had to do that because it's, you know, you haven't got the visuals to help you out. And you have to find that balance of it being clear about the story and what's happening. And I think that's one of the prime objectives for an audio play. Because if you lose the audience, if they don't know where they are, if they don't know what they're trying to do, if you don't know what's going on, you wouldn't actually know. And that would, you know, interfere with actually, you know, your enjoyment of the audio play. So yeah, I would, if you love the books, you'll love this. If you've never played the books, I think you'll enjoy it. It's a good standalone kind of, uh, you know, story that is fantasy through and through. Do recommend it. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. This has been the review of the audio play full cast of the Warlock of the Fire Top Mountains. As I say, they are, there are game books and they've just been re-released by Scholastic. In fact, we have done a the new one. There's a brand new one that was written specially for this launch, for the, for the Scholastic book launch, called The Port of Peril. And we've done a review of that, so you can check that out. And also we've done an Imp Plays, where I've done a review of the Fighting Fantasy Legends digital game. But I also did a playthrough, so you can watch. If you really kind of want to know a bit more about the actual digital game, you can see me playing through some of it. I didn't do all of it because obviously it's quite a big game. 
And it was just really to give you a flavour of it. If you are interested in purchasing this, I'm not sure if it's on Amazon or not, or generally available, but you can go to their website, which is fightingfantasyaudiodramas.com. And they've got a bit more information about it. And you do get a 10 minute, I think 10 or 15 minute talk behind the scenes. So the writer and the director and one of the, I think the, the actor or the, the play Zargor, they chat about the making of it and why they wanted to make it and all the experiences they had putting this together. Thank you once again for watching. Remember, we do have a Kickstarter project coming up. It's going to be launched very, very soon. We have got a few announcements that are out and about now on our YouTube channel and hopefully by now on the, our website, which is thebottledimp.com. So check them out. It's very exciting news. Make sure you go back us. I've never had to say that before, I've never done a Kickstarter, but we are very excited about it. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and like and share all our videos. Tell all your friends, tell all the fellow imps. Remember to keep it unreal, especially if you're a warlock.